This is the first time I ever worked with pecan wood. I was sent two slabs from Texas to make a dining room table and a coffee table. Here I'm using a straight edge for my circular saw to go against and I found out it's easier to wax the wood and also my saw to make it go smoother. This cut I'm making in two passes so it's not so hard on my saw. When I was making the second cut, there must have been some tension in the wood and it started pinching my saw blade. So I hammered a shim in the back to keep the gap open so it didn't pinch my blade. I am removing all the bark from the live edge and the reason for this is because if the bark is left on then in the future it might chip off or peel off so I'm taking it off now. These slabs had a cup or a bow to them and I felt like the best way to correct this was to make some relief cuts. I was hesitant to post this part because it's not exactly safe to make a plunge cut with a circular saw and then go backwards. So I would not make this cut unless you have experience with a circular saw. The reason I did this is because the relief cuts are on the bottom and I didn't want the cuts to go all the way through the edges so you wouldn't see them. As you can see here, the level is touching on both sides and has over a quarter inch gap on the center. To make this slab flat, I took a piece of angle iron and set it on two blocks and then clamped the center. And as you can see here, it makes it nice and flat. The larger slab for the dining room table had a split in the middle. It must have been a fork in the tree. So I removed all the bark in the middle so the epoxy would stick better. I also made relief cuts in the larger slab to correct the cup or the bow. I screwed this brace on because with the crack in the center and the relief cuts, I didn't want the slab to snap in half when I flipped it over. Since I'm a one-man shop, I was trying to think of an easy way to flip these slabs over and I came up with this idea. I screwed these brackets on the ceiling and used ratchet straps to flip the slabs over. The straps just simply slid on the brackets up top, but I had to adjust them because he was going to hit the ratchet part or the hooks. I vacuumed the dust and dirt out of the cracks and the holes and I cleaned around the areas with mineral spirits just to get any remaining dust. I'm going to be pouring the epoxy from the bottom so I'm cleaning around the cracks and the holes so the tape sticks to the wood thoroughly.
I will eventually find out that this was not a good idea. The tape stuck to the wood very good, but at the tape joint, well, you'll find out later. I put a 2x10 underneath and clamped the cup straight, and my idea here is when I fill the cracks with epoxy and it cures, it will hold this slab flat. Now I'm making one final clean, getting ready for the epoxy pour. It's a good idea to protect my hands and also my eyes when I'm using this epoxy. The epoxy I'm using is Total Boat Thick Set. It's a two part epoxy, three parts resin and one part hardener. And I mix it for two to three minutes and then dump it into another container and mix it for two to three minutes again. The customer requested a black epoxy, so I'm using a pigment to dye the color. It was at this moment I realized the epoxy was flowing in the one direction and I forgot to level my slab. It's important to level a project when you're pouring epoxy because it's obviously going to run towards one side if it's not level. So I had to shim up the one side to make it level. I'm using a plastic scraper to scrape the epoxy into the cuts. I had a small leak here at the end so I wiped it off and used some flex paste and the flex paste actually stopped the leak very well. And here I'm filling in the cuts on the coffee table. I came into my shop about an hour later and found this. The tape joint had failed. I should have put something more of a solid backing under here instead of just relying on the tape joint. So this was very unfortunate. I waited for it to harden a little bit overnight and then the next day I poured the second time and this time it did not leak. I decided to make this video project in part so I could explain each step instead of rushing through it. In part 2 I will show putting the C channels in and much more.